number one, and it's a biggie. Welcome to R&D Travel, where we talk about all things travel. Please like and subscribe to our channel to learn more about travel and to check out some bucket list travel destinations that we've already been on and then we look forward to going to in the future. The magazine Travel and Leisure listed Italy as the number one destination to visit in 2022. It was also our first country to visit after dealing with the COVID restrictions for two years. Going to Rome can be a very expensive adventure with the flight, the hotels, and everything else to see and do in Italy. However, don't let your budget prevent you from seeing this iconic city because you can do Rome on a limited budget once you have the flight set. In our last video, we talked about doing Rome on a budget, but we just glazed over the sightseeing on a budget in Rome. Today, we will share with you the top 10 things to see in Rome on a budget. Although most are free, there are a few that are worth paying just a little bit more for to get the full Roman experience. Number 10, the Piazza del Popolo. Number 10, Piazza del Popolo. Piazza del Popolo is a large square located in Rome. It is one of the city's most famous squares and it is a beautiful square known for its twin churches, obelisk, and three fountains. You can enjoy the atmosphere and street performers without spending any money. There is an interesting story associated with the Piazza del Popolo, which concerns the obelisk in the center of the square. The Flaminio Obelisk was originally erected in the ancient city of Heliopolis in Egypt and was later moved to Rome by the Roman Emperor Augustus. It was placed in the Piazza del Popolo in the 16th century where it has stood ever since. The obelisk is the crowning glory of the three streets that converge on the square from the south, the so-called trident, and the general layout constitutes one of the most splendid arrangements of an obelisk in the world. You can access the Piazza di Popolo right outside the Flaminio metro station. It's a really cool place to visit. Number nine, and you've probably never heard of it, but don't miss it, the Trastevere neighborhood. There are many neighborhoods in Rome, but the Trastevere neighborhood has a unique charm and characteristics to it. The Trastevere neighborhood has cool streets and colorful buildings. Trastevere is full of narrow, winding streets lined with historic buildings, shops, and restaurants. It's a great area to explore on foot and get lost in the maze of alleys. Trastevere is also a foodie's paradise, with a wide variety of restaurants, cafes, and bars. Visitors can try traditional Roman dishes such as pasta alla carbonara or cacio pepe and enjoy a glass of wine in a lively piazza. But one of the coolest things about this neighborhood is the Monte Testaccio, also known as the Hill of Pots. Monte Testaccio is an ancient artificial hill. The hill is made up entirely of broken terracotta pots that were used for storing and transporting olive oil and wine during the Roman Empire. The hill is approximately 35 meters high and covers an area of 20,000 square meters. It is estimated that over 50 million of these pots were used in the construction of the hill, which dates back to the 2nd century AD. Today, Monte Testaccio is an archaeological site and an important historical landmark in Rome. Visitors can climb to the top of the hill and enjoy panoramic views of the city. One of the cool things about the Trastevere neighborhood is the street art. You get a chance to go there, not only take advantage of eating the food and, and walking around, but look at all the great street art too. Number eight, the Spanish Steps. The Spanish Steps are a famous landmark in Rome and are located in the Piazza di Spagna. They were built between 1723 and 1725 and were designed to connect the Trinita de Monte Church with the Spanish Square below. The Spanish Steps have 138 steps and a popular destination for both tourists and locals alike. At the base of the steps is the Piazza de Spagna, or Spanish Square, which is an awesome place to people watch. In the square you can find a fountain called Fontana della Boccaccia, which is a Baroque fountain located at the foot of the Spanish Steps. The fountain was designed by Gian Bernini and his son in the early 17th century and it is shaped like a boat. Other things to see in the square include an obelisk dating back to the 6th century BC which was also brought over to Rome by Emperor Augustus. And if you like high-end shopping or window shopping then you are surrounded by shops such as Gucci, Prada and Valentino. The one thing you need to know is you cannot sit on the Spanish steps. There's a law that actually says you can't do that. And if you do sit on the Spanish steps, police will yell at you and tell you to get off the, off the steps. Number seven, you knew it was coming, the Trevi Fountain. The Trevi Fountain is a famous Baroque style fountain. It is one of the most famous fountains in the world and is considered a symbol of the city. 
The fountain was completed in the 18th century and is considered a masterpiece of Italian Baroque art. As a funny story, there is a well-known legend associated with the Trevi Fountain. It is said that if a visitor throws a coin into the fountain with the right hand over their left shoulder, they will ensure a return trip to Rome. If they throw in two coins, they will return to Rome and find love. And if they throw three coins, they will return to Rome, find love, and marry. The legend has led to millions of coins being thrown into the fountain over the years. And the money is collected from the fountain every night and is actually used to fund a supermarket for the city's needy. So, you can say that the Trevi Fountain is not only a beautiful piece of art, but also a good cause. Now, if you want to get that perfect shot of the Trevi Fountain in the summertime, just know that there's going to be hundreds of people in at the fountain at the very same time that you are. Number six, the Pantheon. The Pantheon is a beautiful ancient temple that is free to visit. You can marvel at the impressive dome and see the tombs of famous Italians, including the artist Raphael and the first king of Italy, Victor Emmanuel II. The Pantheon is a magnificent ancient Roman temple that was built between 118 and 128 AD by the Emperor Hadrian and is considered one of the best preserved ancient Roman buildings. The name Pantheon means all gods in Greek, which reflects its original purpose as a temple to all the gods. The Pantheon is famous for its unique and impressive dome, which is made of concrete and measures 43.3 meters in diameter. The dome was once the largest unsupported dome in the world and was a great architectural achievement of its time. The temple's interior is also adorned with beautiful marble columns, intricate carvings, and colorful paintings, which makes it one of the most breathtaking examples of ancient Roman architecture. Like many religious sites in Rome, the Pantheon requires visitors to dress modestly. This means that shorts, short skirts, and sleeveless shirts are not allowed. It is a good idea to also bring a scarf or shawl to help cover up if necessary. Admission to the Pantheon is free, and also photography is allowed inside the Pantheon, but the use of flash or tripods is not permitted. It's just a cool building, and the idea that that structure, the concrete structure, is unsupported is just a marvel in itself. Number five, no matter what religion you are, you need to see the Vatican. St. Peter's Basilica is one of the most famous and important churches in the world. It is located in Vatican City, which is a sovereign city-state within Rome. The history of St. Peter's Basilica dates back to the 4th century when Emperor Constantine built the basilica on the site where St. Peter, one of the apostles of Jesus Christ and the first pope, was buried. The original basilica was replaced in the 16th century by the current structure, which was designed by some of the most renowned architects of the time, including Michelangelo and Bernini. Tourists visiting St. Peter's Basilica should be aware that the dress code is strict and visitors must cover their shoulders and knees. Cameras are allowed, but flash photography is not permitted. One of the highlights of visiting St. Peter's Basilica is the opportunity to climb to the top of the dome, which offers stunning views of Rome and the surrounding area. There are two ways to reach the top of the dome, one by taking an elevator and then climbing 320 steps, or by climbing all 551 steps in its entirety. The climb can be physically demanding, but the stunning views make it all worth it. Visitors can see the city of Rome stretching out before them, including landmarks such as the Colosseum, the Pantheon, and the Roman Forum. Now, if you're really lucky, you can go to the Vatican on Sunday and hear the Pope's blessing, which lasts between 10 and 15 minutes. During the blessing, the square is packed and the crowd is festive. Cari fratelli e sorelle, buongiorno. Buongiorno! It is a cool experience no matter what religion you follow. The Vatican has amazing art in its chapels and in its museums. You can climb up to the top of the Vatican and get a beautiful view of the city. It's a don't miss. Number four, the Imperial Fora. The Imperial Fora are a series of monumental public squares located in Rome that were built by various emperors between 46 BC and 113 AD. The Fora served as centers of public life in ancient Rome and was used for a variety of purposes, including political gatherings, commercial activities, and religious ceremonies. The construction of the first forum, the Forum of Julius Caesar, began in 46 BC and was completed in 29 BC. The Imperial Forum was designed to be grandiose and impressive, with monumental architecture and elaborate decoration. They were also used to showcase the power and achievements of the emperors who built them. Today, the Fora are important archaeological sites and popular tourist attractions. Tourists visiting the Imperial Fora can explore the ruins of the various forums and see the many monuments and buildings that were built within them, including temples, basilicas, and triumphal arches. Some of the highlights include Trajan's Column, which depicts scenes from the Emperor's military campaigns, and the Temple of Peace, which was built by Vespian to celebrate the end of the Jewish War. The Imperial Fora. The great thing about this place, so much history at absolutely no cost.
Number three, a nighttime walk around the city after having an aperitivo. An aperitivo would be what we consider the United States happy hour. And there are several places throughout Rome that, that have them. If you go into a restaurant with an aperitivo, you can purchase a drink or two, and they will walk around and provide you with snacks while you sip on your drink. And these aren't your chips and salsa, popcorn, or peanut snacks. These are very tasty treats that are very delicious. After you finish up at the restaurant, you can walk around the city and see it all lit up at night. seen it during the day, the city looks totally different at night, all lit up. You've got to experience it. Number two, go on the Appian Way and tour the catacombs. The Appian Way is one of the oldest and most important Roman roads. Along the way, you can see numerous ancient Roman ruins, including mausoleums, tombs, and catacombs. Bikes can actually be reserved online before you leave home, and I will leave the website in the show notes below. One of the coolest things to see are the catacombs, and they will actually be one of the first things you come across as you bike the Appian Way. We decided to tour the catacombs of St. Calixtus, which is one of the most important Christian burial sites in the city. The catacombs of St. Calixtus were established in the second century AD and were used as a burial site for thousands of Christians, including many popes and martyrs. They were in use for over 400 years until the fifth century AD. The catacombs cover an area of over 90 acres and consists of a complex network of underground tunnels and chambers, but the tour is only in a limited area. In the tour you will see some early Christian frescoes, sculptures and inscriptions, along with the location of some of the first popes, such as Pope Calixtus I, for whom the catacombs are named. Other popes buried here include Pope Cornelius, Pope Julius I, and Pope Damascus I. The price to visit these catacombs is 9.4 euros for an adult and 5.9 euros for a child or student. If you decide to bike the Appian Way, give yourself enough time to really take it in and enjoy it. Be prepared with items such as a camelback to have water with you at all times, and keep in mind that the road is still used today, although there is less traffic on Sundays. The road can also be a bit uneven and bumpy in places. And if you're especially adventurous, you really ought to try out riding the Appian Way on a bike. Preferably an e-bike. Number one, and it's a biggie, the Roman Colosseum and the Forum and Palatine Hill. For goodness sake, pay the 16 euros to go inside the Roman Colosseum. I would encourage you to be there when it opens at 9 a.m. or pay a little bit more money and purchase tickets ahead of time through sites such as Viator to get a skip the line pass. You can purchase skip the line tours for as little as 35 euros and it is well worth it. There are also many other tours that can cost you even more money to see such things as the underground. The Roman Colosseum, also known as Flavian Amphitheater, Construction of the Colosseum began in 72 AD under the Emperor Vespasian and was completed in 80 AD under his successor Titus. The Colosseum was primarily used for gladiatorial contests and public spectacles such as animal hunts, mock sea battles, and public executions. The amphitheater could hold up to 50,000 spectators and was renowned for its innovative design which allowed for quick entry and exit of the crowds. Today the Colosseum is one of Rome's most popular tourist attractions, attracting millions of visitors each year. Most times when you think of the Colosseum, you don't think about the Roman Forum and Palatine Hill. But make sure you tour those also. When you get to the top of Palatine Hill, you actually have a very good view of Circus Maximus. This concludes sightseeing in Rome on a budget. I encourage you to get out and visit places that you have always wanted to go but thought it was too expensive to visit. Rome has many places to see and this visit can be done without breaking the bank. I'm sure that there are others watching this video that know of other places to visit while in Rome that won't cost a lot of money. If you do, please place them in the comments below. Please hit that like button and subscribe and we'll see you again soon.